every couple of years I kind of change my style. I change up. I change things up. I got a new. I got a new hairstyle. Look, I'm growing a mohawk again. Remember, remember mohawk I used to have. I don't know if you guys see that, but <laughs> check it out. I'm gonna grow a rat tail. So I'm growing a mohawk, and I'm gonna keep the mohawk like the same length, except at the back. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let the. <laughs> I'm gonna let the tail grow in the back. I haven't told my wife yet. She hates when I have long hair. So I, I'm just gonna surprise her. One day she's gonna be like, what's going on with that back of that head? And it's just gonna grow down. It's just gonna let it grow down. And I'll see, maybe I'll, you know, like Kai Green, you know how he has like that long tail, that braided tail? Yeah, first 20 mil rat tail haircut. That was right, <laughs> right Rocco? Yeah, so yeah, I might have like a long tail and braided or something like that. Just let that shit just hang down my back like an extended brain stem. So, but anyway, I'm just having fun. Life is good. So I just, I like to have fun with the way I look sometimes. That's really what it is, man. Like when, we, when, we're, when we're going about life, I like it, I look at it this way. When I was a kid, I would put on, I would take like a towel and I would tuck it into the back of my shirt up here. And I would pretend like I'm a superhero. I, would, I literally thought I was a superhero. I thought I was Superman. I would try to jump off the staircase. In fact, I did. I would jump off the staircase with that towel in, my, in the back of my T-shirt. Because when I had that towel in the back of my T-shirt, I was Superman for a moment. I, I would walk and talk and act like I'm Superman. And I grew up in the 80s, so Superman was, that was before Superman turned gay. So Superman was dope. Also, I went to the circus once and I got this big sword, almost like that. It was a big sword, but it was a plastic sword. And I would put this sword in the back of my shirt too. I would tuck it into the back of my shirt and I used to watch He-Man. So when I put that sword in the back of my shirt and I walk around, I really thought I was He-Man because that's how he carried his sword. He carried his sword in the back and he'd pull it out and slash people. And so just by having that sword on my back, I walked, I talked, I felt, I thought I was He-Man. And when I started strength camp, I wore camo. By the way, I have boxes and boxes of camo tank tops. I might just like start sending them out to you guys. I don't know. <laughs> I got to get rid of them because I don't really wear that no more. But when I, when I started strength camp, I was on, I was on YouTube if you remember correctly, uh, Young E was rocking the camo tank top. And so when I put on that camo, I felt like I was, I was in the military. That's why Strength Camp looks like that, right? Where is my logo? Right there. Strength Camp looks like that. It's a military logo. So I was like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a damn soldier. I'm a soldier for strength. So I dressed like a man that was a soldier for strength. And I believed I was a soldier, soldier for strength. And people, people will behave towards you the way you think about yourself and the way you present yourself and the way you dress. That's how they're going to behave towards you. And then when I became a hippie, well, I was hippie Elliot for a little while. I, if you don't remember, that's when I grew a long mohawk and I started wearing crystals. Cause what I wear, where I also wear my heart on my on my sleeve, but I also wear my heart on my chest. So whatever you see hanging around my neck, you know, just think back. Whatever you see hanging around my neck, that that exemplifies what Elliot you're dealing with. And so now you know I wear the I wear the cross. I have my cross, and I have my um. I have my miraculous medal. And so I bought this cross when I first returned to Christ, and I was actually reading a lot of Orthodox books, right? And it was the Orthodox church that brought me back, not the church, but the Orthodox writings, the patristic writings, the writings of the, of the fathers, who, I, I don't know, I mean, it was all one church back then anyway. And so I got this then. And then when I remembered I was Catholic, and I started learning about Catholicism. I was like, damn, my mom and my grandma have been wearing this my whole life. So I put that on. So that's a part of my, it's a part of my costume. Because the way I dress 
determines the way I feel. And so there was Hippie Elliot. I was wearing crystals. I don't even remember. I had a pink crystal. I wore a pink circle crystal around my neck. I should pull it out. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful pendant. I should pull it out one day. Um, but it represented, it represented a, an aspect of me. I would call that effeminate today, but I believe I needed to go through that phase. In the same way I spoke to you guys about uh, the amazing development of men, a book, The Amazing Development of Men, and how the author speaks about how a man will rise up his whole life from a page to a knight to a warrior, always ascending to a warrior, and then there's like phases of the warrior. Early warrior, a lot of you guys are in your early warrior, right? Like early 20s. Then there's mid warrior, that's probably like in your late 20s, 30s, right? Early 30s. And then there's late warriors, which is like close to 40. I became a late warrior mid in my mid 30s, and I move fast. She says, though, that you don't become, so a man, you, it's always an ascending path, right? Page, knight, warrior one, warrior two, warrior three. But then there's a descent. This is, this is, this is an archetype. This is a pattern that's recognized. And so in our world, because uh, we denigrate masculinity and we don't understand uh, natural patterns in life, they like to call it, oh, a, a midlife crisis. And they make it sound as if it's, you know, it's the end for the man or like, you know, he's cracking up or he's going crazy, which you do. You do go crack up and go crazy, especially if you don't have a containment. You don't have perspective for what it is. And most of us don't know what it is. I didn't know what it was. I was blessed. God just kind of carries me everywhere I go, man. No matter how hard it is, it's almost like God is just carrying me. And God placed me in placed in front of me the work of Robert Moore. May he rest in peace. King Warrior Magician Lover. And I, and I fell in love with that guy's work. I was right around age 36 and I started going down. And I was like, what's going on in my life? And that was about the time that I discovered uh, the amazing development of men and the archetype of initiation when he talks about this very thing that I'm talking about. Initiation in men. And I also discovered the cosmic clock all around the same time. Cosmic, cosmic clock is also referred to as cosmic initiation. And it is about the 12 year cycles of a man. And every 12 years, you're going to go down again. You're going to go down again. As a man, expect to sort of go down again. Um, but there, those are, those, there are micro cycles, there are macro cycles, and then there's a global cycle for each individual. And that's a whole life cycle. And so um, around that time, when a man is at midlife, that's when he goes in, in, in Iron John. I mean, this is all just amazing stuff I learned about the same time. My Iron John, the book Iron John, which I know a lot of you guys have read, and you need to keep reading it. Read it again and again and again and again in your life at different phases because it will mean different things. He calls it catabasis. He says you go into a catabasis. Catabasis is that going down, that going down process. But that going down process is important it's critical it is required for you to ascend as a king and so one of the things that the woman in uh iron john that wrote not iron john i'm sorry uh, the amazing development of men said she says that for many men when they go down they lose a lot they might have a divorce they might the business might fall apart or you know go bad for me a lot of, it was my my fam my relationship with my wife became it became different, but then it became better because I I rose up out of it. You know there was a time there where our relationship was never bad, but I wasn't living up. I wasn't carrying my duty. I wasn't doing what I was doing I was supposed to be doing because I was too busy being effeminate and going down into my ditch. And so and that's not a good look for a woman, especially she doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> a woman doesn't like that because. They, 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 they love safety and security. So if you start cracking up and going weird, they get freaked out. So my wife is kind of like freaking out on the inside. Mm -hmm. 
But here's here's some of I'll, I'll kind of mix my, my story in a little bit with what's expected in these kinds of patterns. So uh, I hit I think I hit rock bottom and started on my way back up when one day I my father in law had had come down to Florida because he was very sick. He lived a bad life. He was an alcoholic, married bad women, and just he was a nice guy, but a weak, addicted man. And he came down here because he was very sick. And this is where his family lives, his two daughters. And he was in the hospital. And then uh, he was getting better. And then he got worse again. He went to the hospital. And I had a dream one night. And in the dream, it was like God was speaking to me. I don't know. It was a voice, maybe an angel. I don't know. But a voice said to me, you, talking to me, you and Guy, that was his name. You and Guy are about to make Colleen very miserable that was what the voice said to me you're about to make and and, you know i love my wife so i woke up and i was like damn i'm about to make my wife very miserable and i knew i was like i got to change my ways this is when i was smoking weed and stuff and so i knew i had to change my ways and so immediately i'm that next day i started making changes there were certain things that i was doing that i stopped doing there was certain things that i wasn't doing i started doing and i told my wife she was like what like it was a little bit of a shock to her because you know when it's time to act i act so I was like, this is changing, that's changing, doom, boom. And then that same day, she got a call from the hospital that her dad wasn't doing well, and he died. And so it was almost like God gave me a, a, a chance. It was like, he was like, Colleen's about to have some hard times with her father passing away, and she needs you to be strong and stop being a slap dick. <laughs> and it all happened on, same day, right after that dream, all happened up, happened that same day. And I can't say that it was an immediate bounce up, but I was on the ascending path after that. I was on the ascending path after that. It was like right then when I started focusing on masculine issues, I kicked all the women out of grounding camp and, uh, and have been on this, this way, this path up. I can't, it's not, it's not a bounce. That was like 2017, 18. That was like 2018, 19, 20, 22, 22. So four years to be where I am right now. And God has given me so much grace over those four years. It's crazy. So much grace. I didn't do it. But he kept me afloat. 